Welcome back to D&D Rule School. This is episode two, and we're gonna be talking all about the abilities and skills present in Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. Hi everyone, my name is Nate, and this is WASD20. Back in part one of D&D Rule School, which I'll put a link to up top, I basically told you that the players don't need to know too many of the rules to get started, and that's totally true. You simply listen to the Dungeon Master, or DM, set the scene, and then act in character. Tell the DM what your character does, and if needed, roll what the DM tells you to roll to resolve any challenges. But what if you are the DM, you might ask? To all of you new or aspiring Dungeon Masters out there, knowing the abilities and skills really does help. Don't worry about getting them all perfectly as soon as you start DMing, but do make an effort to try to learn them early on. If you're a player in a D&D game, it is also very useful to know the abilities and skills because they impact your character. And knowing when they're used can help you create an effective character build, if that's something you're into. Or if you're not into all that optimization stuff, it can at least help you create a character that plays the way you want to play the game. It can help you make good decisions when it comes time to level up your character. From a Dungeon Master perspective, when a player tells you what they want to do, there's always a way they can try to do that thing. And if you know these abilities and skills, you'll be able to consistently and fairly determine what the players should roll. So here we go. Our outline will be the six abilities in the order they are found on the character sheet. These abilities have been around since the very first edition of Dungeons & Dragons, sold way back in 1974 and they're the basis for the ability scores in all sorts of other products, even today. As we cover each ability, I'll also describe each skill associated with it, and some of the other ways the ability score is used in the game. The first of the six ability scores is Strength. Strength is physical power, the ability to exert force. You use Strength when you want to lift, pull, push, or break something, or force your way through a space. For skills, Athletics is the only strength-based skill on the list. It'll be used in situations where your character is jumping, climbing, or swimming. Strength also comes into play when we talk about melee attacks. It'll be used to determine your attack bonus and damage for most melee attacks. We'll get into all that attack stuff when we talk more about combat in episode 3. In the player's handbook, there are also specific formulas for carrying capacity and your ability to drag, push, or lift, and that's all based on strength. The next ability we'll cover is Dexterity. This measures agility, reflexes, and balance. The skills that are associated with Dexterity are Acrobatics, Sleight of Hand, and Stealth. Acrobatics. Staying on your feet in a tricky situation, standing on sliding rocks, or sliding under a rapidly closing door. This skill could also include stunts like diving, performing a flip, something, you know, acrobatic. Sleight of hand. This is pretty much what it sounds like. Being sneaky with your hands. Like planting an object on someone. Or concealing an object on yourself. Or maybe gently lifting something off of someone. Like picking a pocket or cutting a coin purse. Stealth. Trying to hide or remain concealed. Slipping by unnoticed or sneaking up on someone. In addition to these skills, for attacks, Ranged weapons use your dexterity modifier in determining the attack bonus and damage. Any melee weapon that has the finesse property can also use dexterity as the modifier rather than strength. Other places dexterity shows up is helping determine your armor class and also determining your initiative bonus. More on both of these things when we talk about combat in the next part. Our next ability is Constitution. Constitution measures health, stamina, and vital force. A constitution check, or most often a saving throw, would be used for resisting poison, sickness, or disease. Constitution can also be used to see how many pints of that wicked dwarven brew you're able to down before, well, falling over or losing your lembus bread. A high constitution could also come in handy for going without sleep or surviving on little food or water and seeing how long you can hold your breath. There are no skills that use constitution, but it's obviously pretty valuable for all of the reasons I just mentioned, and also for this major reason, because your constitution modifier helps determine your maximum starting hit points. 
and you get to add your con modifier to your hit die when you roll to recover hit points and when you increase your maximum hit points when a character levels up. We are halfway through and I just wanted to give a quick thank you to Absolute Tabletop for partnering with me to bring you this content. Absolute Tabletop is a small independent publishing company that makes really great RPG supplements most of which are D&D 5e compatible. So if you want a good published adventure, some new DM tools for the kit, or an inspirational setting book, Abtab has you covered. I have a link in the video description, and if you use that link when you make a purchase, it'll let them know that I sent you. You won't regret checking out their stuff. The fourth ability on our list, intelligence. Intelligence measures your mental ability, your ability to recall and reason. I think of it more as book smarts, as opposed to wisdom, which we'll get to in a minute. An intelligent person would probably do very well in school. You have likely studied things, and you have a sharp mind and memory. There are a lot of skills that use intelligence. The first is Arcana. It's a character's ability to recall lore about spells, magic items, eldritch symbols, magical traditions, other planes of existence, and a lot of other things like that. History. This one's pretty obvious. You used to recall historical events, famous people of the past, ancient kingdoms, wars and conflicts of the past, and lost civilizations. Investigation. This skill is used when you want to look around for clues and make deductions. Think of the kind of situations where a detective might come in handy. Maybe you're finding something that's been lost or solving the mystery of what might have caused this wound. Nature. This is used to recall knowledge of plants, terrain, weather, animals, any part of the natural world. Religion is used to recall knowledge of deities, holy symbols, religious rites, prayers, and traditions. This could be from established organizations or fringe cults. In addition to all the skills above, intelligence is the spellcasting ability for wizards, which means it will help determine how effective your spellcasting is. The fifth ability, wisdom. Wisdom measures how attuned you are to the world around you. Part of this I think of as street smarts. Someone with high wisdom has a natural intuition or perceptiveness. Wisdom checks could involve reading body language or someone's feelings, noticing things about the environment or caring for an injured person. Skills associated with wisdom are firstly animal handling. This skill can be used when calming down a domesticated animal, trying to keep your horse or another type of mount from being spooked, or trying a daring maneuver while mounted. You may use it while trying to understand an animal's intentions. Uh, this all has to do with reading animals and being able to sort of communicate with them or direct them. Insight is another wisdom skill. This involves gaining information about a person's intentions, being able to tell if someone is lying to you, for example. With high insight, you're able to read mannerisms, body language, speech patterns, and stuff like that. Medicine. A medicine check involves pretty much anything medical. You can diagnose an illness, ailments. This skill is particularly useful in helping you stabilize a dying companion, especially when you're in the heat of combat. That can come in handy. Perception. This skill is used a lot. Perception measures how attuned you are to the world around you, how keen you are to your surroundings. Do you hear or otherwise detect the creature that's been following you? Do you spot the flicker of light in the wall that indicates a secret door? Perception measures all of this. Survival. Survival checks can be used when you attempt to guide your group through tough areas of the wild. Check for tracks, hunt an animal, predict the weather, or avoid natural hazards. That is a lot of skills for wisdom. In addition to all of the above, wisdom is the spellcasting modifier for clerics, druids, and rangers. The final ability score in D&D is charisma. Charisma measures your ability to interact effectively with others. If you have high charisma, you have a force of personality. You speak well and can be charming and confident. There are several skills that use charisma. Firstly, deception. This skill is used when you're trying to fool someone. You may be directly lying or trying to hide the truth, or it could be more subtle. Intimidation. You're trying to influence somebody by appearing threatening. This can be done with words or body language. Performance. This skill is used when you're trying to entertain with music, dancing, acting, storytelling, or something similar. Persuasion. Using your charisma in a more good-natured way than intimidation to convince someone of something. It could be sweet-talking the night watchman to let you into the town, or perhaps helping negotiate peace between two warring factions. 
Now that we've covered the charisma-based skills, there are also some spellcasting implications. Charisma is the spellcasting modifier for bards, paladins, sorcerers, and warlocks. So these are the ability scores and skills, and knowledge of this is an important foundation for playing D&D. If you're confused about how to actually make a skill or ability check using these scores, I explained that pretty well in part one, so go check that out. In the next episode, we'll talk about how combat works. You see, attacks and spells and things that characters usually do in combat are themselves a type of ability check. Before we go, I'd like to thank Absolute Tabletop once again for partnering with me to bring you this content. Check out the link to their stuff in the description. I'd also like to thank my patrons for their support of this channel. Patrons literally help me pay the bills and make this content possible. So if you like what you see here and you want to support, check out the link to my Patreon page right up there. Lastly, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button down below. Make sure you're subscribed, and if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. I always love to hear from you. Take care, everybody. You'll see me again very soon.